within our assignment. Each of you are assigned a position with God. You are assigned a set of instructions from God. You are assigned some things you need to do, things you need to say, things you need to build, things you need to form. Doesn't mean you're going to see it. He never said you had to see it. He said you had to speak it and build it. Hallelujah. Don't get caught up on whether you're going to see your work finished or not. Get caught up on whether you're obeying the word. That's what we need to get caught up on. Amen? Amen. Be obedient to the spirit of God. Emerge yourself inside of the word of God until you are saturated. Filled to capacity. There's no more that can get inside of you because the Holy Spirit takes full governance over your body, your mind, your spirit, your soul. Then you're going to have the nerve to give up your finances, your family. As for me and my what? House. We shall do what? Serve the Lord. Do you know that your house is your body? Your house is your thinking. As for me and my thinking, we shall serve the Lord. How can you speak for someone else? Think about it. If you live with me, Bishop, how can I say, as for me and Bishop, we serve the Lord and I didn't hear from him yet? Because God is a God of order and he follows your what? Will. He gave you free will to believe as you choose. Some of us got faith. Hey, I remember the dying. Hallelujah. Some of us got faith the size of a mustard seed that moves things in our life. And some of us, the same people that believe that sit beside each other, don't have enough faith to believe their rent will be paid next week. Think about that dichotomy for a second. Somebody next to you believes God for their healing and their miracle. On the other side, they may not believe that God is going to start their car tomorrow. All right. Just think about that for a second. So here's my point. If you got somewhere you're trying to be, if you got an assignment from God, if he tells you to play at seven churches, seven churches are Asian minded, then you better say what the spirit of the Lord has to say unto the what? Churches. Oh, I'm in Genesis and Revelation. Hallelujah. And so I'm saying to you right now, each of us has a set of assignments. Yeah. Can I be with you for one moment and explain to you that you have not even scratched the surface? You say, oh, I, now that's where you're wrong, preacher. That's where you're wrong. See, I beat cancer. I, I, I made a million dollars. That, 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 that's where you're wrong. I, I think I, I think I said my course. I, I think I did a few things already where I got an accomplished life. I, I've served my country. I, I've done these things. And so what, what do you mean there's more for me and I haven't scratched the surface? How can you tell me I didn't scratch the surface when I spent 50 years? You're just turning 50. I spent 50 years doing my craft. I'm done. I'm pretty much done. I'm comfortable being done. I've accepted that I'm done. I say unto you, you have not scratched the surface of what you're supposed to do. You think God made your body, your mind so strong and sharp to do a few assignments and then it's time to retire? Can I say it this way? You don't retire from life. You retire from a job that was pimping your skills. That's what you actually retired from. You retired. You retired from a group of people who saw what you were worth. They saw you 
start on time. They saw what genius you was and how you could build their company. And they said, I'm going to use those skills to pimp that person so that I can do what I need to do and make the money that I need to make. But I promise you, they weren't saying this about you. He's sharp. He's skilled. He's this and he's that and he's going to give all of that. She is going to give everything she is that's good to the Lord. And I just want to be a conduit. And while you're building my company and fame, Lord, I want you to use their skills to bless me and my company. They're not saying that. But God gave you the gift to be saved. He gave you the gift for it to be said of you. That's what I'm saying. He gave you the gift to articulate, Bishop, the words and the skill that would break all educational barriers. Educational barriers. I mean, I can't understand you because I'm not educated enough to get it. So when he gave you anything to say to anybody where you can reach them on that level, that is a gift of God. That is the anointing of God on your life to translate his will to another human being. Think about that. He's using little old you to translate big old things. My God. So, you're not finished. As a matter of fact, if you feel you're finished, you're in my detention hall. See me after the service. We don't pray. And the reason being is because you still have not spoken to that person in the parking lot that was going to commit suicide. And you don't know they're going to commit suicide because you're not omniscient. You don't know all things. See, God knows all things. You are not omnipresent. You're just right here with me. My God is at next week avoiding a car crash for me and you. Contemplate that for a second. He's inside of next year. You're dealing with circumstances this week. So whenever he's doing anything for you, please understand this. It is assigned to your assignment. If he gives you the will to do anything, it is simply because he's got another set of instructions coming. And if you have the wrong thinking, if you are filled, coughing in the bed with Christianity and sin, if you're just so sick in your mind that you can't even witness to somebody, you ever been in a situation where you know God put you in it and you don't say nothing? The conviction you feel later, you feel with all things, and you're not completing your assignment. So I want to avoid that. So avoid Christianity and sanity. Stop mimicking what you see other Christians do. Instead, warm your heart with the word of God. It doesn't take that long. Just open up that Bible and look up the subject that you're dealing with. Say, God. Before you actually do that, can you show me in your word where this is so? Because I'm feeling this and I'm going through this and I need to know how to deal with it. And instead of doing that, what we normally do is pick up this and we call the next person close to us to see how they feel about what we're going through. But can I tell you this? You smart, they smart. They don't know much more than you. All you're doing is getting their spin on it and how they would handle it. Now, how can they be a partner in your chronological thinking if they are not even you? They can only tell you what they're thinking. And everybody's got an opinion. Amen? What makes somebody else's opinion more valid than yours? Well, maybe if they're using the word. If they're using the word, then their opinion is more valid than yours. And so you've got to hide the word in your heart so that you can know that when someone else is coming with the word, whether they're coming with the unadulterated. Sometimes you got to try the spirit. Huh? And so avoid Christianity and sanity today. 
by becoming saturated with the word of God. And I believe you'll understand this best this way. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Hallelujah. I think you will understand it best this way. When you're unsaturated, you're not tasteful. All right. All right. Think about it. If I cook something for you and I don't put my foot in it, not minutes, literally, but my heart, you're going to taste that I didn't care when I cooked it, right? See, my heart wasn't saturated in what I was doing. Somebody ever did something for you and they said, uh, I'm just doing this, and you say, thank you so much. And they go, yeah, you're welcome, but you could tell they didn't want to do it for you. Have you ever asked somebody for something and they, they gave it to you, but you could tell they didn't really want to do it? They were not one with their decision. They weren't saturated. They weren't filled to capacity on that subject. But I got a way that it's this little detail that if you had this little detail, they would listen to you. You have to become one with what you're saying. And the only way you can become one with the word is if you do what? Know the word. Right. Not what mama said about the word in tradition, but you have to know the word. I mean exegetically know the word. Yeah. Know what it's saying literally, not what you isogenically are going towards bending the word to what you believe. Let's not do that. Let's, what does the word say? That saturation. I best illustrate that point when you were a kid and you were eating your cereal. Please tell me I'm not the only one that liked to drink the milk after my cereal. Anybody else like to do that? Okay, thank you for admitting it because whew, sometimes when you're being transparent, right, Doc? And so when you drink your milk after your favorite cereal, it has a probably a sweet taste to it. Yes, and it makes it more palatable. Correct? Yes. And so, but you ever, parents in here, you ever told your children at a younger age that milk does a body good? Yes. Or at least the commercials, you let them play in your house. Yes. And then you try to get them to drink milk because the society said drink milk for stronger yes. bones, yes. for vitamin D, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But they just didn't like the way it tastes. Yes. They wouldn't drink it because they didn't like the way it tastes. And when they go to school and they look at the milk and they frown upon it, but there was one milk that they didn't frown upon. So what I want to tell you is that you have to allow the word of God to be saturated. In your heart and in your mind. Okay, think about this. The last time you quoted something from the scripture, but you wasn't one with it, was it effective? Just think back. Because you wasn't one. So what I want you to do is hide the word deep in your heart. So that the next time you go talking. They see in you the truth. They see in you. They're hearing the truth. And guess what? The truth is palatable. Because it's in the form that they take it. It's in the form that they swallow it. It's in the form. When they went to school, there was chocolate milk. Right. Oh, one of y'all might be them kids. I'm not sure. <laughs> y'all act like you know what I'm talking about. I was trying to go a little. And so, when you saturate the word inside of you, every time you pour it out, it'll be what they want to hear. Oh. Why? Because you're assigned to them. Yeah. That the word that you hear in your heart 
gathered with a circumstance and a plight that they're dealing with, mixed with truth, which is God's anointing on that situation, when you speak it out of your mouth, they become healed. The anointing destroys the what? Yeah. Of bondage that is on us. Correct? Yeah. So when you mix the word of God inside of your belief system, then you literally are palatable. When you become palatable, it simply means this. I'll be the well in you that won't run. The assignment on your life is not finished till I say it's finished. Who are you to tell me how to use you? Some of you, God has told you to do some things. Some of you, God has told you to start some things. And you spent time telling him how it can't be used. I want to say unto you, if not you, who? Amen. And if not who, what? What will happen to what you were supposed to bring to the earth? Can't nobody say it, first lady, like you can say it. Even if he's gifted to say it, they have to hear it from you. And so you have to be fit be joint with the word of God. Applicable at all times. Applicable when you stomp your toe in the middle of the night and you want to say a different word. You have to be applicable then. You have to be applicable when you're comfortable around your friends and they believe what you believe and you feel comfortable enough to take the pants out and let your hair down. You got to be comfortable to hold on to the word in spite of how comfortable your flesh is. See, because I'm trying to get us all to avoid Christianity insanity. It's when you keep believing those Christianity type thoughts but they don't mean anywhere. So here's what I want you to let go of. The pandemic put us in a state of shock. So now that we're in a state of shock, there's an antiquated way we did things, and there's a new aged way that we did things. Here's what I want you to know. Remember I said, but wait, there is more. I want you to know if you take some of the antiquated things, tradition, because the all tradition is bad. And you take these new wave conditions mm -hmm. and you add them together and you douse them both with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Then the mixture that you come up with is called effectiveness. And effectiveness is what will fill the change. Not hype. Not the way we did it before. The way we did it before is resting in peace right now. Because God allowed some things to happen during the pandemic to purge his church. That's what it was. It was a purging. And, 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 and every calamity that happens for one is a blessing for another. When a hurricane comes in a city, there's a group of people in another city that now have work. They didn't have work. There's a blessing. And so, Look at it this way. If you hide this word deep in your heart and you look under your seats for it, as you hide the word deep in your heart, I want you to look under your seats. There's an envelope under your seat. Sorry. <laughs> Take it out. That envelope, if you look at the writing on the envelope, it has a statement on it. The reason why that was beneath your chair is because we're going to start something and we're going to institute it tonight. I want you to hide the word deep in your heart that you might not sin against God. Each of us has something going on in our lives. You may see prayer on your card. You may see strength on your card. You may see praise on your card. It might have worship. It might have strength. It might have trust. Hallelujah. I got him. Can I have one? Uh, excuse me. Thank you. 
what I want you to do is hide the word deep in your heart. Now you say preaching, well I pray before I go to bed. I do what the Bible says. I want to prove something to you that there is a dichotomy of thinking here. You are called to reach a generation that is ignoring your voice. That's all right. And you believe because they're ignoring your voice that you're not called to speak to them. Usually in chronological age, they're young. Think about it. So there's a generation that only receives information on the internet. They only receive ideologies, a system of ideas through the way and means in which they do. So let me promise you something. If we don't purge our minds and let this mind be in us as it was in Christ Jesus, he would never leave them to come here. He would never leave them. He would leave the 99 for the one. He's that kind of God. He wouldn't isolate a generation of people because they're not doing it the way we are used to doing it. So when you take off the world of Christianity and sanity, what you then have is effectiveness. So I want you to be effective at 99 years old and as effective as the young child that's back there. You do that by saturating yourself with the Word of God, becoming the Word of God, and reaching them where they are. That's how you get them. You get them without the insanity thinking. Thinking that they have to be here in order to get it. Thinking that they have to be a member of your church in order for you to share who you are. Think about it. Why did he give you the knowledge he gave you specifically for you to keep it and selectively give it to it? Why would he, our God, be like that? So evidently, if you're selectively giving it, it is by your choice and not his divine order. So I want us to give to his divine order this evening. I want us to saturate with the word of God. I started you off. You have it under your seat, in your hand now. It's pretty. It looks nice. I want you to quote it, pray it, do whatever you need to do to submerge yourself within it. Amen. Because every night after this, I want you getting three or four down in a week. Ah. You pick the scriptures. You pick the scriptures. And this is how I want you to pick them this time. I didn't say 23 Psalms. That's right. It might be yours. If it is, you use it. Hear what I'm saying, though. Hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. Prophetically speaking, there are things coming up in this near future that you will need to deliver to someone else and he needs you to understand more scripture because he's going to bring all things to your remembrance and bring up the right scripture at the right time and that scripture might be the scripture that's in your hand right now for you to bring up and because you're saturated with the word when you speak it to that person they give you a testimony next week that they were about to kill themselves and they that's how powerful the word is so hide it in your heart and hide other words in your heart of God in your heart so that A, you might not sin against him, but B, so that you can complete the reason you came. So friends and family, thank you for coming to be with your family, to be with your friends. I hope that you have avoided this Christianity and sanity that is upon our church. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good. As a matter of fact, um, if I may, uh, just say a prayer for you. And then have you to keep that prayer. Is that okay? All right, let's pray. Say, Father, Father I come to you, I come to you tonight, tonight to avoid, to avoid the Christianity and sin. I came to pick up your word and hide it in my heart to become saturated with your word that I might be effective until the day that I come see you. I promise you, Lord, to do the best I can with what you gave me left. 
to live. To live. And that is to spread your word. Amen. That's in my heart. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. sitting there looking and wondering and what he was talking about, but I was taking notes because we're going to have to go back uh, and find out. But in the midst of all that has been said so far, I want to say to you, keep the job. In the midst of all that I've asked the Lord to do before you got up to school, I still...